Hello folks, welcome. Here we are again. We've had a little bit of a break from uploading videos just because I was uh, I've been away um, doing some workshops in different places in Salt Lake City. So a big hello to all those folks out there in Salt Lake City, Red Kiln Pottery Studio and um, and Aaron and uh, um, Oh, Dave and um, the other chap, I've forgotten his name. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been good to do a little bit of travelling, but it's always good to get back. I've got a lot of things to do here, so anyway, I've just been, I've just, uh, yes, we've done a few bowls here, which, are, which we are... This one actually is not ready to trim, but I've got a couple there that are ready to trim. So, this guy's still a little bit soft in the base there, so we'll let him stiffen up a bit. I'll put him over there for now. And, um, yeah, I've got some more that I did the other day here. Yeah, these are just about ready for for trimming. So here goes. Yeah. Yeah, so these are like open bowls. As you can see, narrow foot, um, fairly fairly thinly thrown, uh, but I've left extra clay down here at the foot for trimming. So that's what we're going to do now. So just, just wet the rim, dampen the rim, dampen the wheel head. Oh, I hope that'll fit on the wheel. <laughs> he just fits. So just tap centering him. So let's let's just bring the camera in a little bit. Something like that. Yeah, so tap center and then give some downward pressure. And he should stick. Yeah, so when doing, uh, using a trim tool to carve a foot, you want to think of the width of the foot here, especially in relation to the use of the bowl. Now these bowls are not salad bowls, they're not bowls for putting anything in, they're just going to be like decorative type bowls. So. I'm not too worried about having a narrow foot because the narrower the foot, of course, 
Um, I'm just moving the camera around so you get a different angle because I let's see if we can get a better angle around here. You actually want to see the potter's hands, don't you? Really? Because yeah. All right, we'll try that. Um, yeah. So the width here. I'm thinking of it to be on the small side because um, you see the narrower the foot the more lift you give the pot the more elegance it has you see so now I could carve a foot in here uh, carve out a foot ring but in this case I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm not actually going to carve a foot ring there's so two things I'm going to think about when I'm trimming this. Bearing in mind the shape of the bowl and the material that I've got there to trim away. Um, so a narrow foot may even go a bit narrower than that. And then an area between about here and here, between my two fingers, where it's concave and then on the outside from that about that point there where there will be a shoulder a slightly convex shape well anyway that's what's going through my head so the things I want to determine at the moment are the width of the foot and also where this shoulder that I spoke about where that's going to begin and end as it were. So, yes, you see as potters we're very much thinking about the form of a pot, aren't we? Well, we should be. So what I'm trying to do here is create a concave form, just there. So by making it go concave here, that's going to cause that shoulder, that there to to stick out, you know, like a like a bit of an elbow. And what I'm doing here, down the side here, that is going to be curved, going the other way. Oh, Simon, you talk to us in riddles. How can we understand these things? Well... It's the language of shapes, my dear Watson. The language of shapes. Yes. Well, shapes, you see... Shape to a potter, it could be said, maybe this is my definition, but you see the sh shapes, shapes to us potters is a bit like the musical notes are to the musician. So... So as I'm trimming here, I'm looking over there in the mirror because the mirror is giving me a moment by moment view of the, of the overall profile of the pot I see in the mirror. If you've never thrown with a mirror, I highly recommend that you get one. Just an old mirror, you know, one of these guys, cheapy, I got this from, I don't know, one of those 
those cheap shops, I can't remember which one it was. Uh, something Mart, but it wasn't Walmart, the other one. And just mount it in a piece of clay, you see, at, at the right angle, so that will give you a good a good view of the of the form as you progress, as you shape it, you see. So I'm cutting this area here. So it's kind of nice because you've got you see you've got one form that's going that way, which is concave, and then this piece here is going the other way. So you've sort of got the double, and um, you can use you can use a you can actually use a metal kidney here if you want to. I don't use metal kidneys that often, but I will use this kidney. Uh, like you see me doing so, which is helping me to shape the curve here. See, shape and form, shape and form as potters as we create them on the, in our work on the potter's wheel, they can be very subtle very subtle differences that one can create very very subtle and see the shape of the pot kind of creates a mood do you ever feel that, you know, when you look at pots, you sort of think, oh, I don't like the shape of that one. It sort of looks kind of depressed, you know, it looks, kind of looks dumpy, you know, it's, it's, it's got, it's too wide at the foot. It's not got enough lift, you know, it looks a bit kind of, do you ever, do you ever think of pots like that? I, I do, you know, I look at pots sometimes and I think, oh, that's a, it's a nice sprightly shape. You know, it's yes. I suppose shapes. There is a language of shapes, isn't there? See, I'm still playing around with the width here, in in relation to the total width. Now you might think, looking at that, oh my goodness, that looks very 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 narrow there you know well it, it it is it is narrow because this form is going to be very sprightly you see so that the turnout there's a slight turnout here on the on the on the lip down here so i'm just Again, using the the rib here, and with this kind of rib, I can I can trim, you see, a little bit. So I'm using the using this curve to shape the curve of the lip. Sometimes when you're trimming a broader, a broader surface area, you don't want a tool that is only so large because it can leave lines in the work as you, as you trim. Now if you take something that's got, you could use Look, this is my throwing stick, okay? If I clean the edge of my throwing stick. You need a throwing stick 
like I use, like one of these that has got a bit of a, an edge to it. But you see, I can, I can use that edge. If I incline it back towards me, I can use the, the edge there, even of that, to, to remove, remove clay, you see. I mean, I'm not, not using that as such, but I mean, I could do, you know. All right, so I'm thinking that we may have arrived here with the, the foot. So let's have a look down through the lens, see what we're looking at. Oh, I see. All right, well, let's just, okay. So what we've got to do now is just uh, tr trim out here. All right, so I'm just gonna So we're going to put a little line there, which I usually do, like that. It gives me a, a kind of boundary. So I, when I'm trimming, I think, okay, I won't go. Further than that. So when you trim out a foot ring, you always start at the center and move move to the to the outside, you see. And I often leave a little spigot in the middle. So the, the center where we begin, looking at it from this angle, is the, is the highest point. You see, it comes up like that. So what you're trying to do is mirror here the, the form that you've got on the inside, which is the inside, of the, the inside of the bowl is shaped like this, isn't it? So you want to mirror this to the shape of the inside or reflect it or whatever. Right on the corner here we always put a little bevel, all right? Just to break the corner. Okay, I'm going to take that off the wheel now. Have a look. So just give a little tap. Okay. Yes, he's loose. So you'll be a bit careful to get these off sometimes because so I'm now going to give it a, a feel here down through here yeah it's feeling quite good um, maybe we get a sideways view of that I don't know if we can so just so you can appreciate the the form, the tune that it's playing, so to speak. Um, let's have a look at the foot ring, so that you can see that. You see that slight sheen, shine on the surface of the clay that you get. That that's an indication that this. The clay is at is at a good, good hardness for for trimming. It's not. It has that slight shine. I don't know if you noticed when I was trimming. It also had a slight noise. It was making a sort of like a squeaking noise against against my fingers as it was going around. That's also another 
I like to hear those sounds and I like to see that slight that slight sheen on the clay. Okay, so that's a, an elegant type of bowl. And um, so there he is. That's that kind of bowl. All right, so there's a few thoughts there for you on on form, on shape. I hope that's been helpful. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for joining us, folks. Thanks for watching. I hope that uh, that helped you. It's always that you see. Uh, it's always about the language of shape and form, and we want our pots to be in tune, don't we? So that they they sing a special song. All right. Uh, visit my website simonleachpottery.com, and we do have some workshops there, but not until October, November. All right. And uh, so, yeah, write to me and you can visit our Etsy shop if you want to. And um, yeah, above all, keep practicing. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.